Hey, Joe, welcome to 3D Printing Nerd Studios, of course, proudly powered by PCB Way. 8% off, link in the description. That's a pretty good value. This is Taylor, but you know him as Nero 3D, as kind Hello. of creator, as yes. a, a Canadian maker. I, I'm a Canadian who makes stuff, so Canuck Creator. It's a very clever name. I spent weeks brainstorming it. Taylor here was <laughs> visiting Seattle and 3D Printing Nerd Studios, and we had an idea for a video. Yes. Now, as content creators, we try to find fun ways to make content, and thankfully, we have something yes, incredible. Yes, we've got, we've got this guy. It's a robot. This is the Diablo. It's a two-wheeled balancing robot that offers a lot of extended functionality. It's kind of Raspberry Pi, so... You could put clipper on it. You could, it, put, you clipper could put clipper on it. If you really, really wanted to, you could mount a small printer on top and literally have the robot running the printer. Upon when it's wheeled up, it can hold four kilograms, which isn't much, but once it's down like this moving, you can hold 80 kilograms of material. So last night we were brainstorming ideas on what to do this, and I, I think Joel can say it best here. It is the... It's a terrific, robotic, automated, interesting, lethal, experimental rover. Yeah, so... A trailer. Trailer for short. Trailer, trailer for short. <laughs> As makers and creators, we end up with not just small parts, but extra parts. Tons and, of extra parts. And useful things. I remember when we talked about our trailer for this robot, I said, ooh, ooh, and I found this extrusion. So this is what, 2020 extrusion? 2020. 2020 extrusion, and someone by the name of uh, SNR Tech Bytes for a Fan Mail Friday years ago sent me uh, a spool holder. Some of the printed parts broke, but I always kept the extrusion because he's a good you, you, dude. And you're gonna find a use and for him at some point. And you're gonna find a use for it. So this is going to be the structural component of the trailer. Next, we had to figure out wheels and... That's a circle. That's a... We took inspiration from the... We took inspiration from the spool racer at yep. Murph and figured it would be a great way to utilize spools for another We're purpose. using something. So for an axle, we needed we needed a, a rod, right? Yes. And we found this old JG Aurora 3D printer that was just, where was it? Can you pass me the food box? box? Oh, yeah. There we go, we got rods. Yeah. This is gonna be the bin that is the, the bottom of our trailer. Yeah. And it's got these flanges on the side that will go over the extrusion to hold it in place. I was really surprised at how well this part went together. This was uh, the uh, Prusament Azure Blue. Yep. And this was the Galaxy Black, right? Which is, oh, it prints so it nice. It prints really well. Prints and so these nice. were both printed on the Prusa XL. Next up though, we need to have things within the spools in order for the axle to sit because that's a little wibbly wobbly. Yep and you modeled these. So these are basically just filler. So we're gonna just run a bead of super glue around the outside. There's a flange there, and that's just gonna go in there. There's an eight millimeter hole. Rod's gonna go in there. And anytime you design a bl uh, blind hole in something, just something to keep in mind, air needs to go somewhere. So if you need to put a blind hole to fit a dowel in, just put like a little one millimeter vent hole on the bottom. It'll just make putting the dowel in easier. It also makes it a little bit easier to remove the dowel if you need to yes. multiple times. Next up, we had to design the axle, the, the axle holders, or what do we call these? The axle, the um, axle we're just gonna call are? them the axle holders. The axle holders. Because we're, we're just using some 608 bearings, some standard skateboard bearings. These are eight millimeter rods. We just need something to let them spin. So we just have this printed part here. Very simple. You just have a, an area where we can press the bearing in. They are press fit. So that way we don't need to use any positive retaining like uh, glue or screws or something to hold it in place. It's just press fit. And then just two little holes so we can bolt it on. And so those will go on the underside here yeah, and here. The and then the axles will go through and connect up our wheels. Last for this is going to be this part. You have to have a way for your trailer to attach to the vehicle that's pulling the trailer. And that's what we did right here. This this modeled up looks great. This one came out pretty good. And actually, this was like, I think the second last thing I designed. So I kind of remembered how to use Fusion a bit by the time we got to this. <laughs> um, but still, simple shapes. Very simple shape. Just triangles, holes, and a bunch of fillets to make it look pretty. Fillets make everything look great. So hot right now. We will attach this. It goes on the underside of the extrusion and attaches on with some T-nuts. And then 
with the wheels back here and the extrusion right here and, and right here and then this and tongue in the front, we will have ourselves a functioning trailer. Trailer. So I think yeah. now we just put it together. Might as well. Let's get to it. There we go. Now at this point, we have ourselves a pretty fantastic trailer. It's a trailer. Like, look at look at this thing. And I mean, it, it rolls. Now that we have the trailer in place, we have to figure out how we're going to attach it to the robot. Right here in the back, there's this plate that I think we can attach something to. Like and this. And Taylor modded up and printed that. We've got, what, carbon fiber PET-G? Carbon and, fiber PET-G and just regular PET-G. And PET regular PET-G and put it on the back just, yeah, just so. to kind of so it's two separate parts glued together, and we're hoping we could just zip tie it because we don't want to do anything kind of permanent right now. Not yet. If you ne you never get it right the first time going back, I probably would put some heat set so I can actually screw <laughs> both of the parts together. Um, but one thing I did put was a heat set at the top. So once we put the trailer on, we could run a M3 screw through, and that'll give us some positive retention at the top and keep it from falling out. Yep, so that's down. Yep. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Where are we at? Where are we at? Right there. What, half a degree? Half a degree, I'll take it. Half a degree. I'll I mean, take half a degree a any bit. day of the week. So now we have the trailer. We verified that it connects to the robot. Now all we have left to do is load the trailer with stuff. It looks functional, but we have no idea if it's even functional. So we got to get this on the ground. I hear there's people here that need some filament delivered. I think a good test of this would see if the robot can bring the filament to the humans. That's a good test. All right, let's, let's do, do it. it. Let's do it. <laughs> Grab your filament. For me? For you. All right. Uh, thanks, buddy. Yo, Joel! I need some tubes! Whoa! <laughs> This worked way better than I thought it would. I'm really impressed <laughs> at how well this trailer performed. And, and yeah. one thing that we have to be clear about is the time it took from ideation to testing is less than 24 hours. And, and I and that's including sleeping. That's including like, sleeping. Like we like designed we, it, we sent it to the printers, <laughs> we slept while the printers printed, and then we came in and we put it together. So I think that's part of the joy of yeah. being a, a maker and having someone with a DIY spirit yeah. is being able to make do with what you have and then create what you don't and then mash it all together. And, and even if it doesn't work, you're, you're still learning along the way. Like there were things that we didn't even know were a factor in this until we put this together, like the PID loop. Like with the, the PID motors. loop on the balancing. So yeah. when we attached, the trailer, and it was not in the crouch mode, but the standing mode, because the standing mode is self-balancing, yeah. but now there's a weight on this end, so it continually it like thought <laughs> it had to go backwards to correct for it. And so, like you said, it's just a PID loop. Yeah. And I believe that's adjustable through the uh, the controls. Oh, you would I just think, adjust yeah, it. You can yeah. adjust the you trim. You can live it. Oh, trim. Yeah. Yeah, you adjust the trim, just like an RC car. Yeah. And um, I know that we connected up a GoPro, but like you said, there's a Raspberry Pi right up front. So you could put a, a webcam on there, have it connect to your home Wi-Fi. So you could drive this around doing the little deliveries around your house or wherever. This could be a streaming platform. Yeah, anything. This it's could a Raspberry Pi. Like you said, yeah, you do whatever you want with it. It's that. But unfortunately, not everything <laughs> was perfect because, as you can see, we're. Uh, we're no longer attached to the robot. So after the delivery <laughs> of the tubes and the fibron was made to Luke, uh, the robot ten it celebrated a little celebrated. bit. Celebrated. I mean, I was on the controls, <laughs> you know, trying to have some fun, and that whipping action did break this part. Yeah. And uh, I, I mean, I did put it through some something extreme, I think. Yeah. And it's not like that is going to take a long time to fix. No, it's it's we just redesigned the part to be a little bit more beefed up. Because what I think happened 
is during a, a hard turn. These wheels, another thing, since this is one single action, we don't have a differential or anything. So like <laughs> yeah. the wheels like to jam up when you're doing a full turn. And what I think happened is it just kind of did that. It just popped off. It just popped off. It just off. popped off. So we can make a beefier part and part oh, of, you know, and it's good that we do zip ties. Yeah, you just snip them off, put a new part on, off you go. But this does have an SDK and an installable thing. And you can do all sorts of really cool stuff with it. So I'm gonna be doing more with this Diablo robot. If you have ideas that you want to see implemented on the Diablo robot, and you want to see Taylor come back and help me implement them, just you know, leave those in the comments below. Well, Taylor's here visiting, but in case yeah. you don't know who he is, Taylor, you have the floor. Tell everybody where they go to learn more about you and what you do. Hello, I am Taylor, the creator of YouTube, link in description below, like course, the smash button and all that other YouTube stuff. I, I build printers, I do projects. I, I'm a Canadian who makes stuff. So if you like making stuff, subscribe. And then go. also we do live streams all the time, like three times a week. That's, and they're fun. That's my thing. They're fun. So they're come hang pleasure. out. Make sure you subscribe and hang out. Yeah, links below, obviously. Well, listen, if you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to talk to each other more. Fight for costs you believe in. DIY make all the things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And as always, high five. You want one? Yeah, high five. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. Crisp. That was crisp.